I wanted to bring today's episode to the podcast, talking about the importance of hydration for both male and female fertility. So many of us are chronically dehydrated. We're not drinking the right type of water. We're not drinking enough water. We may be drinking too much water. And so we're going to be breaking down the strategies and tips you'll need to make sure you stay hydrated so you can improve your fertility. Hey, everyone, excited to announce that Get Pregnant Naturally is now turning into a daily show. So we're still going to have our Monday show where we're going to have a deeper dive with functional medicine experts, natural fertility experts, mind-body experts, really interviewing the very best so that you can have the tools you need to help you improve your chances of pregnancy success with your own eggs. And now on from Tuesday to Friday, we are going to be turning our show into a Q&A show. So we are taking your questions. This is called Ask the Fertility Experts. I'm going to be recording the answers to your questions with a member of my team. So Dr. Tabitha Barber, she's triple board certified in obstetrics, gynecology, menopause, and functional medicine. We are taking your questions live on the show here. So if you've got a question, all you need to do is go to Fab Fertile Inc. That's my Instagram, Fab Fertile Inc. Instagram. Send me a DM, send me your question. Dr. Tabitha and I will answer your question live here on the podcast. We can either, you know, use your name, your, your first name, or you can just have an anonymous question. You just let me know. And so excited to really give you, uh, benefits of having, you know, a set of eyes here on your questions so that you can improve your chances of pregnancy success. So this is going live tomorrow. So excited for you to listen and take care. I regularly speak with five to 10 couples per week who are struggling to have their baby. And although we want to help everyone, we only have four spots available per month to work with us. I would like to invite you and your partner to a supercharge your fertility discovery call. And this calls for you if you meet at least one of these criteria. You've been trying to get pregnant for at least two years. You've been through at least one failed IUI or IVF. This calls for action takers. If you're not ready and you wait, the risk is you'll need to wait two to three months for a spot to open up. If you're seriously considering working with us, go to Fab Fertile, F-A-B Fertile, and click on book a free call. That's Fab Fertile, F-A-B Fertile, and click on book a free call. Then you'll be all booked in and ready to spend 30 minutes to give you the action plan to getting pregnant naturally. One theme that keeps coming up with the couples in our Fab Fertile Couples Coaching Program is sleep. Whether it's insomnia, having a hard time falling asleep, waking up at night, or feeling tired when we wake up, sleep is critical for fertility and hormones. And that's why I'm so excited to have Blue Blocks as our podcast sponsor. So we're exposed to blue and green light from our phones, our tablets, our computers, indoor lights, and more. And this exposure impacts our melatonin production. Melatonin is essential for both female and male fertility. It helps determine the frequency and duration of our cycle and impacts sperm. There's lots of blue light blocking glasses on the market, but the ones from Blue Blocks, they've actually compared other popular brands and Blue Blocks block 100% of blue and green light while other brands fall short. So I have their sleep glasses. They have red lenses and the ones I have are a little translucent frame and they're so stylish and really cool. And so they eliminate 100% of the blue and green light in the 400 nanometer to 550 nanometer range. So this is exact range has been shown in clinical studies to disrupt melatonin and negatively impact your sleep. So all you do is wear your sleep glasses after sunset until it's time for bed and you'll notice improved sleep after just one use. And it's also cool to use when you're flying for managing jet lag. I got to say, I was a little skeptical about the noticing improvement after one use, but literally I did I use these glasses and my sleep is actually already pretty good. I used them for one day and I have to say after one day, I had the best sleep of my life. I just felt so rested. So these glasses, they ship free and they're tracked for all orders anywhere in the world. And also they have all their frames come in prescription, non-prescription and reading glasses. Plus you can send in your frames and they'll add the blue light blocking and green light blocking lenses to your frame. So this is an easy hack that you can add to your fertility toolkit. All you do is go to blueblocks, B-L-U-B-L-O-X.com. Use the coupon code GETPREGNANTPODCAST at checkout and receive a 15% discount. That's blueblocks, B L U blox.com and use the coupon code get pregnant podcast to receive your 15% discount.
Hey there. Thanks so much for listening to the Get Pregnant Naturally podcast. And I've got a favor to ask you if you are enjoying learning about the functional approach to fertility, consider going to iTunes and rating and reviewing the podcast. This is how it helps the show reach more people that are struggling with infertility, knowing that there's another approach that really can get to the bottom of why it's not working in the first place. So all you need to do is if you're on the app or the desktop, just go in and consider leaving a five-star rating and leave a review. And there is step-by-step instructions in the show notes showing you exactly how to do that. So if you can just take a few minutes, just take a few minutes right now, you can pause this, this recording, come back, leave the review. It would really mean the world to me and help others that are on the fertility journey as well. Take care. I didn't need to go to donor eggs. Obviously, mm-hmm. I don't regret it. I have beautiful children. I could have done things differently, restored. I was still cycling back in my in my 20s. I could have looked at my health, the environmental toxins, the stress I was under, Many, many women are being told their eggs are too old. That's often merely an assumption that's not based on actual evidence. The reason being that there is no direct test of egg quality. You can't test egg quality. It's the man who's got a food sensitivity or he has a zinc deficiency. Like there can be a root cause to these symptoms that are, you know, quote unquote, period problems that the doctor will pass you a pill without any question of why. And some part of you knows that if you can reframe your journey from not one of struggle, or if it is struggle, learn how to embrace the struggle. Learn how to embrace it. Most conditions in the child occur during the nine months of development. It's the the genetic switches are turned on or turned off and they're pre-programmed. So you are in such a powerful, amazing position to do amazing things for your kids. You know, why is IVF the first step? Because we believe it should be the last step. Welcome to Get Pregnant Naturally, where functional medicine and natural fertility solutions will help you get pregnant and have your baby. Hey there, I'm Sarah Clark, founder of Fab Fertile and your host. I believe the functional approach is the first step for anyone struggling with infertility, and my aim is to help you get pregnant naturally. Today, I'm welcoming Dr. Dana Cohen to the podcast, and we're digging into water and why staying hydrated matters for fertility. Dr. Dana Cohen is an internal medicine doctor who has spent her career focusing on integrative medicine. She's helped thousands of patients find relief from a variety of health problems utilizing the principles of integrative and functional medicine. Her first book, Quench, with co-author Gina Bria, has garnered rave reviews and has a cult following of devotees. It's been published in six languages. Thanks so much for listening. I'm so thankful that you're here. Make sure you hit subscribe. And if you know someone else who is on the fertility journey, please share this podcast with them. Hey, Dr. Dana, excited to have you on the podcast. Thank you for having me. I'm excited too. Yeah, awesome. So can you share your journey and really how you came to do this work? Uh, it's, it's, it's quite a journey. So uh, I was finishing up residency in internal medicine at Albany Medical Center. And, you know, truth be told, I was $200,000 in debt. Mm. And you can't turn back at that point. I was not very happy. So I had to just continue to move forward. And was I couldn't do any more, you know, fellowships. I just had, I, I needed to work. And um, I, it was about six months before I was graduating, I saw an ad for a world-renowned wellness center in New York City. And I was like, Ooh, that sounds really cool. What is I'm thinking it's a spa of some sort. <laughs> and so I, I took the I literally took the ad off the wall. It was in the office because she would post ads there all the time. I took it off the wall so nobody would see it. <laughs> and, um, and I called and it was for Dr. Atkins. And it was a headhunter. And I remember thinking, uh, so I was actually on the Atkins diet at the time. This was like the second surge of it being famous again. And um, I felt unbelievable. I felt fantastic. And so I went and I met with him and, and got the job and, and he changed my life. I thank, thank God for him because I never looked back. Um, I do have to say the first six months were a little hairy because I was like, where's the studies on this? What are you doing? What's all this IV vitamin C drips that you're doing down there? He, he was just, he was wonderful. He was a very charismatic man and very, very brilliant Um, and taught me so much. And I just, uh, like I said, I thank God for him. He changed the way I thought about medicine. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Let's talk about today. We're going to be digging into water and talking about your book quench. How did you, first of all, how did you get into writing that book? 
So having worked for Dr. Atkins, and this was, by the way, 24 years ago, okay, yeah. I have always known that, you know, to be in this field, you need some kind, you need a book, you need to have a book to have a platform. Mm-hmm. So I had been searching all these years, what's my book going to be on? What's my book going to be on? I thought about thyroid. I do a ton of thyroid in my practice. I do a lot of hormone replacement in my practice. And the truth was, I couldn't find my book in those things. I, you know, it was hard for me to say, well, you have to go see your doctor and get blood tests. And, you know, yeah, there's books in there, but I couldn't find what I wanted to write about. One day, my co-author, Gina Bria, called and we had a mutual friend. She's like, can I come down and talk to you about what I'm doing with the Hydration Foundation? And I literally thought she was going to um, sell me a <laughs> a water purifier or some kind of yeah. Ponzi scheme. And I, But I remember thinking like, sure, she knows this good friend. Come on down. And she came in, sat down in front of me and started to tell me you know, she had done her research um, on, she was an anthropologist on how desert people hydrate, which led her to the work of Dr. Gerald Pollack. And so she started to talk to me about his work. He's a world-renowned water researcher um, based out of University of Washington in Seattle. And he has discovered that there's another phase of water that exists, um, fourth phase of water, and that's um, which blew my mind. I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> you know, the water we know exists as liquid ice and vapor. We've known it ever since we were in elementary school. It turns out that there is a fourth phase of water and it's this gel form or structured water. He calls it easy water. And so we just sat there and she was blowing my mind. And I said, and I looked at her, I said, Gina, this is the book I want to write. Do you want to write this book together? And she said, oh my God, I never thought that this is where this would end up, but yes. So after that, we really started to dive into the research and write the book. And that's how it all started. Amazing. Amazing. Well, let's talk about why it's so important for to stay hydrated for both male and female fertility. Because so many people, and like myself, I literally would be like, oh, I don't have time to pee. Like peeing once a day is good. And my, you know, my urine is like so dark. And now I'm like, you know, I, it's kind of the opposite where I'm peeing every hour, but um, maybe I'm taking too much. But yeah, so so many people that we see just they're not drinking enough water. Maybe it's the quality of water. So let's talk about why why that's so important for both male and female fertility. For all of humankind, <laughs> I, I will tell you that the first thing I say, I say this in every lecture, every podcast I do, that learning how to hydrate properly is the single most important first step you must take in treating and preventing chronic disease period. Um, So I can't say to you exactly how it affects fertility per se, except it does. You know, so I'm going to give you a couple of of reasons why. The first being that hydration is um, how we create homeostasis in the body. It's where our cells want to be. It's what every cell strives for. Without hydration, you can't achieve homeostasis, period, right? Which is balance, by the way, balance, fluid balance in and out of the cell. The other thing, it's how we detoxify. You, if you're not hydrated, you can't detoxify. Think about it. The only way we detoxify is by peeing, pooping, and sweating, right? And all of those require hydration. So for those two very simple reasons alone should be enough. But there are, you know, and there are real, what's the word, real chronic diseases and real illnesses that that are very clearly associated with this low grade or subclinical dehydration. Certain cancers like colon cancer and uh, bladder cancer are associated with low-grade dehydration, but even diabetes, blood sugar, prediabetes, um, metabolic syndrome, Alzheimer's, um, and then let alone all the things that we already do know. So we touched upon it, constipation, headaches, um, fatigue, brain fog, uh, you know, difficulty concentrate in concentration, oh, movement, just to move fluid, you know, just even be feeling, feeling your best, muscle aches, joint pains, those kind of things. So, you know, to relate it specifically for, to fertility is difficult, except to say it's the first step that you should take. Everything else hopefully then will, will either appear or come into place. But I, and I always say learning how to hydrate before you start on any nutrition, any diet plan, any new lifestyle regimen, start here. And it's actually very easy. Mm-hmm. Um, it, you know, it's not something you, you'll notice a, a difference in three months. You'll notice a difference in one day. You mentioned something about peeing once a day, which is really interesting to me because I used to sit at my desk for, you know, nine hours straight, not get up once to pee. Mm -hmm. And in fact, we've all done that and, and learned to ignore our thirst so that we don't have to get up and pee because we don't want to be bothered 
mm-hmm. you know, with working at our desks. But we're actually meant during waking hours to to get up and urinate every two or three hours. Mm-hmm. And for me, that is one of the biggest sort of, I don't know if it's not really a sign, um, it's not really a symptom, but you want to you want to get up and pee every two or three hours. If you're not, you're not hydrating enough. Yeah. And, and even for, for me, it was like, I was so busy that I, I thought I was busy. You know, we all, we all, we all were all busy, but at the time I was like, why can't I pee faster? Like <laughs> this is taking too long. Like how, but how ridiculous, like what the heck was I thinking? It's interesting right. though, right? Where you're like, not even just totally disconnected from your body. I just back yeah. to the, the, for the fertility side of things, but I guess with the, with the cervical mucus, making sure like oh, being yeah. hydrated, like that's like a key for the sperm to get to the, the egg. So, you know, a lot of people are uh, dehydrated and their cervical mucus is like not even there. Uh, sorry. Absolutely. Right. And any, any mucus membrane, right. So hydration affects all of your mucus membranes, your, your, mm-hmm. you know, your dry mouth, dry vagina, you know, all, and your dry eyes. Yeah. So those things, um, absolutely hydration first step must take. Yeah. So let's talk about some signs of dehydration, some signs and symptoms. What are, what are we seeing? All right. So, and let's just differentiate between overt dehydration, which, you know, you need to go to the hospital and get IV fluids. Every doctor knows what that looks like. Your mm-hmm. people are really sick. Like you're, you've been vomiting, your uh, blood pressure is really, really low. There's, you know, you're not thinking clearly, you're, you know, disoriented. So that's, that, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about this low grade, subclinical hypohydration that occurs in all of us day in, day out, every hour. Like it's something you really need to stay on top of. And unfortunately, there's not a great test for it. There's not a single sort of like, there's just not a, there's not a good test yet for it. There are some, some things that we can look for, but, but there are, we don't, we don't have access to them and they're not hundred percent reliable. So you need to look for signs and symptoms. And the biggest ones I just said, we got to get up and pee every two or three hours. But another one you mentioned is you want to look at the color of your urine. You want it to be like a pale straw colored. You don't want it to be crystal clear because you can overhydrate. We'll talk about it in a little bit. And you don't want it to be amber or darker colored, except in the morning you know, when you, when you wake up after sleeping all night, your, your urine should be a little concentrated because that's when it concentrates. Also, the other caveat to that is if you take a B complex, a B vitamin, people know that your, your urine can turn bright yellow, right? which uh, then all bets are off for the color of your urine. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, Other sort of signs and symptoms. I think a really good one is that afternoon um, fatigue or that afternoon, you know, brain fog that often is confused with hunger or low blood sugar, I think more often is probably related to dehydration and not necessarily. So try hydrating better earlier and you may find that you don't need to reach for that candy bar or that sugar, you know, rush in the middle of the afternoon. Yeah. Brain fog, headaches, dry skin, dry mouth, constipation, all of those things we talked about. Um, said a little bit earlier. And those are the things that we we all sort of know. There was something, oh, I was going to talk about thirst. I often say that if you're thirsty, you're you're too far gone. You've already let it go, go too far. And thirst is not the best way to to measure um, hydration for, for those reasons. Like we, we've learned to ignore our thirst. We, we've conditioned our bodies to ignore it because we want to work harder and work, you know, stay at our desk longer and we don't want to pee. So we ignore our thirst. And then over time, it goes away. We also lose our thirst mechanism as we get older as well. And so what are some of the things that we typically get wrong with drinking water? What are you seeing? So, I mean, I think the biggest thing that, I, that I'm that i finding, the interest, most interesting thing I'm seeing is that I think people overhydrate with plain bulk water. So I see, you know, there's all these gallon challenges. People drink yeah. a gallon of water a day now. I actually think most people will not do well with that. Um, especially if you're not replacing electrolytes in it. So too much plain bulk water can deplete you of electrolytes. And I see it, by the way, I see it on lab tests at least twice, once or twice a week in my patients, just on basic lab tests. I see, you know, their sodium and their chloride is low. And I'm like, how much water are you drinking? They're like, I drink a ton of water. And I'm like, well, you need to replace some of those electrolytes, either with like a powdered electrolyte replacement or um, some salt, a little a natural rock salt. We'll talk about salt too. Yeah. But I think overhydration is um, is more common than we've been, you know, than we've thought in the past. That's definitely something, and not getting electrolytes in. So when what we talk about in the book is really eating your water is is a phenomenal way to hydrate, um, and and that can be just really eating more more plants and vegetables. 
Um, smoothies are, in, I, I, I am a huge, huge um, smoothie fan. And, you know, there was a huge smoothie craze a few years ago. Mm-hmm. I'm here to continue it <laughs> because I really think it is um, the best way to pack so much nutrition with hydration. So, and, and by the way, when I talk about a smoothie, I'm talking about blended greens with water and then maybe a little fruit for flavor and maybe some chia seeds or ginger, lemon, that kind of thing. I'm not talking about like yogurt and protein powder. That's a whole, that's a meal, you know, um, that's a little bit different. And there's a place for that, but that's, that's not as what I'm talking about with hydration. There's a lot of, you know, yogurt and those kind of things can pack a lot of calories and sugar. Mm-hmm. So we just, you know, we, we did really differentiate in the book of what exactly we're talking about, but a green smoothie a day, um, I think really does keep the doctor away. <laughs> and what, uh, do you have electrolytes? Any, any ones that you prefer? Uh, well, so full disclosure, I'm on the board of a company called Cure Hydration. Okay. Uh, and I love them. I think they are a fantastic product. Um, you know, nothing bad in there. No, um, no fake coloring or sugars. And uh, it's just a really good, clean product. Tastes great. Um, very salty. So, um, and I usually do one. Pa- and I, I can't tell you how many people I, I give them one packet a day. Just do it in your morning um, bottle of water, and uh, and people already notice a difference with that. It's a great. It's a really good product. Cure hydration. Cure C U R E. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, love it. And they're great. They have a new grapefruit flavor out that's so good. Okay, awesome. <laughs> yeah. And then, so we talked a little bit about this in the beginning, but the, the de- dehydration linked to energy and fatigue. So that afternoon slump and where our energy is going low. And then, yeah, sometimes it's mis, uh, misdiagnosed or people may think it's a blood sugar thing when maybe it's a hydration thing. So what, yeah, what do you see in there? Yeah. So I, I think, yeah, there are some people that, that, you're, you know, if you're eating poorly in the morning, lots of carb heavy in the morning, your blood sugar, you know, you may get a reactive hypoglycemia. But I think the majority of people who's like, oh, my blood sugar is dropping, I need to, I need to get sugar. You're actually doing, you're, you're making it worse. I think, you know, I think eating more carbs on top of, you know, when your blood sugar is falling like that, I think in the long term is making it worse. So you need to, you know, fat stabilizes blood sugar. But I, truthfully, I think more often than not is hydrating better earlier in the day, keeping up that hydration throughout the day, you'll find that you're, you're not getting as hungry and you and you won't feel like that just drop in energy or, or brain fog. I just want to say, this just reminded me that fairly recently, this is not in the book because it just came out in January, I believe there was an, an article published, uh, a study published, it was done on rats, but it's the first of its kind that talked about water as a treatment for metabolic syndrome, which was, my mind was blown. I was like, oh my God, you know, and, and it's the first time where they actually, you know, gave the, the rats that were better hydrated, literally treated metabolic syndrome, which is pre-diabetes mm-hmm. and hypertension and that kind of thing. So uh, never before has, it, has, there, has there been any kind of study like that. So hydration for blood sugar is a big deal. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then, so how do we get the water into our, our fascia, our muscles, our connective tissues? How do we do that? So eating your water, there's no better way than eating your water. So we, I now I just want to say everybody's different. I cannot tell somebody you need to drink eight glasses of water a day. And in fact, that's the tagline in the book. Eight glasses a day is not the way. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and which is crazy to me to think about, you know, a five foot gymnast versus a six foot four, you know, athlete, male, how, you know, how do you tell them to both drink eight glasses of water a day? Everybody's different. You, you said something a little bit earlier too, that I wanted to uh, comment on that we're all cut off from our necks down. We need to live in our bodies. We need to know what it feels like to feel properly hydrated and, and everybody's individualized. So unfortunately, and once again, we don't have a test for it. So you need to know what it feels like to feel perfectly hydrated. And then it is, it's the one thing that I am pretty, um, pretty strict about, meaning I am, I am not a biohacking doctor. Like you need to do a ketogenic diet and you need to be so strict on it. I, I very much believe in, you know, not one diet fits all. And also that 80, 20 rule with diet stuff. Like we all need to have some treats in our lives and find the right diet for you. Um, unless obviously you're really sick and there's, there's, you know, we're at, for example, cancer or something like that, then that's a whole different ball game that we have, we have a timeline. Mm-hmm. So my point is, um, hydrating is, in, is very individualized, but it's the one thing you need to stay on top of day in and day out. I have some rules. The first rule, number one, and this everybody can do is 
what, before your feet even hit the ground in the morning, drink a big glass of water with maybe a little pinch of sea salt or real salt and some lemon in it. Um, so get, you know, sort of soak your, your, your organs first thing in the morning is a great, is a great way to get into, um, hydration. And in fact, my co-author, um, found out that that's how desert people hydrate. You know, they, they, they soak themselves first thing in the morning. And then as far as drinking other water throughout the day, I don't know how much water you, one person needs. Um, they may not need to drink any other water throughout the day as long as they're eating really well and maybe doing a green smoothie a day or something like that. It's, it's, I, I can't tell somebody what to do to feel fantastic. Um, I know that there are days that I'm like, wow, I have not drank a glass of water all day, yet I had a huge salad for lunch. I had a green smoothie for, you know, in the middle of the day. Um, and I, and I'm feeling, you know, and some, some great snacks in the middle of the day too, you know, and I'm feeling great, you know, so I don't know if you need to drink more and more water. And in fact, I have many patients that say I drink water all day long and I can't quench my thirst because they're not doing it right. So they, these are people that need either electrolytes, they need more hydrating foods. Um, they need more fiber, you know, so we, we, we talk a lot about chia seeds in the book, um, for example, chia is a great source of fiber, but it's a great source of fat and it's a great source of gel water or structured water. You know, anybody who's ever made chia pudding, you know what happens to chia seeds. They load up with all this little gel around it. They, they, they become um, almost like pudding. Those are some, some of the ways to get the, that water in and out of you. So I just want to start, talk, go one step back. Sorry, I, I skipped over this. Why, why a plant centric diet? So I definitely am, a, I eat meat, I'm an omnivore, but plants are, um, it's, it's thought that plants hold a ton of that gel water or that structured water, the, the water that dark, that fourth phase of water. And it's in that form that's within our cells. So you want to eat more plant plants in your diet, just a more plants. And I say, make your plate like 75% vegetables. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I try to tell people to make more than one vegetable for dinner. It doesn't have to yeah. be one vegetable, one meat, one, you know, make a bunch of vegetables and, and just eat them, load up on vegetables. You can't go wrong, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I, I, I love that. Having like two, three, yeah. Vegetables yeah. and then doing like a, yeah, you do wild caught fish or, or, you know, steak or chicken. And then it's like, oh my goodness, I'm full. Cause I've just had bean salad and a something else. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Another rule. I, and I tell people a rule, have a small side salad with lunch and dinner. And it could literally be a handful of, of iceberg lettuce as your small side salad, whatever it takes to get it in, you know, make that a rule. I know if I sometimes eat dinner before my salad, the salad will sit there. So my rule is I have to eat my salad first. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just little little sort of things that could could help you because I I get full, I, you know, and then I don't want to eat my salad. <laughs> yeah, we we share the tip of having for water, have eating, drinking fifty to seventy five percent of your body weight in water in ounces per day. So obviously that's different for everyone. Um, and then, yeah, it's depending if you are eating more plants or if you're more that kind of like, if you're stuck in the, the bread and the crackers and those drier foods, it'll kind of like suck up the water. Um, then that can be the, the, the differing thing. What do you think of that one? Yeah. So, uh, you know, if you had to twist my arm and I need an amount of water, how much water do I have to drink? I would say, all right, well then the next best thing is to, to drink 50% of your weight in ounces of water now, but also that's not, like you said, 50 to 75%. If somebody's on a ketogenic diet, for example, that's a pretty dehydrating diet. If anybody's ever gone on one, you know, you're peeing all day long. You need to, it, it might be 75% of your weight in ounces or higher. So it's still not the best. There's still, no, it's still not a, not a perfect sort of number. Um, the only way I can tell you is hydrate better. Start by, you know, some water throughout the day. I have, I tell people try drinking, you know, and once again, I get the eye rolls because of this, the whole smoothie craze. Try doing a green smoothie a day at least one a day, more plants in your diet, you know, and, and, and it might be more water. The, oh, the other one is maybe a glass of water before every meal, you know, 20, 30 minutes before every meal, drink, drink down a glass of water, eight ounces of water. Because drinking it with the meal then can Im impact the digestive enzymes. So making sure it's because I used to like have, have always have a drink with my, my meal. Like when I was growing up, it was milk, which I've now determined I'm allergic to, but then, it, then it was water. So then I stopped drinking anything, but yeah, to have it beforehand. Yeah. Like 30 minutes. Um, yeah. That, 
that whole thing about drinking with your 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 meals, um, I, there's there's not a lot of research on that. Okay. So um, I, it makes sense, you know, when you're drinking water, you're um, you're maybe diluting enzymes. I'm not I'm not sure if that's really true, but there have been studies about drinking water a half an hour before your meals. It may fill you up a little bit and you're getting hydration in. And there's some studies that show if you're dieting, you'll lose a few more pounds just by doing that. Um, so I make that a rule. The other thing though, the one thing I do think that also maybe makes a little bit sense about eating with your meals is that you're literally pushing or diluting your food and you're pushing it through out of your stomach a little faster too. Mm -hmm. So meaning you you may not be getting full or feeling the fullness as quickly as if you weren't eating the water. Does that make sense? Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so basically all these strategies then help to move the water, make, making sure the water goes into our fascia, our muscles and connective tissues, all the, the, doing that kind of that structured water, the veggies and uh, the chia starting yeah. with, they're just too small to real salt. Yeah. Fiber, um, salts make, yeah, these are all, and electrolytes, they, that's what helps structure the water. The other thing that I don't talk a lot about, but, um, sunlight, you know, we need, we need, we need sunlight to, um, to help structure our water internally, believe it or not. This is based on work of Dr. Pollock. We are very much more like plants than we've ever imagined. And there's, there is some good research on this that we as humans use, um, water greens like chlorophyll and sunlight to make energy. And that's, that's photosynthesis, but we also make energy from it as humans, which is very interesting information, I think. Yeah. So getting that 20 minutes a day, and then I guess we're all lathered up in sunscreen. So making sure you're not, yeah. Burning, but yeah. And, and we're living yeah. north, so we don't get a lot, but it's important to really try to get a little exposure um, every day, you know, get your, your face and your shoulders and your legs exposed. I think it's important, and especially now in the summertime that we have it. Okay. And then as far as the unrefined salt and hydration, what's your, what's your tips and the, the reason that we need to do this? Yes. Um, so, you know, there, so first of all, there's a lot of research that's showing the whole, the old um, adage that we need to avoid salt is, is not necessarily true. And those, those studies were, are talking more about sodium and specifically even like all those sodium laden foods, like, you know, you know, uh, fast foods and canned soups and mm. all that stuff is, I, I'm still saying that's not good for you, <laughs> yeah. uh, but real salt, meaning rock salt, like Himalayan pink salt. There's actually a brand called real salt that I mm. love. I love oh, the yeah. it. Um, there's uh, sea salt um, that has the full spectrum of minerals and electrolytes in it. Um, and that, you know, a little bit of that throughout the day we need, we need it in our bodies. We're not getting enough electrolytes. Uh, once again, that morning glass of water with a little tiny pinch of, of real salt and, um, and some lemon is, is a great way to get those electrolytes in there. You know, I would, I would be careful though. If somebody has hypertension and it's salt sensitive hypertension, they still may be a little bit sensitive to it. I think more often they won't be, but they can experiment by putting a tiny little pinch of sea salt and take your blood pressure before and after and see what happens, you know? Because what is it where it's, a, it, there's, is there some sort of taste in there? If you can't taste it and you can taste it, what's your, is there something on that that you know about? Am I getting that? Uh, in the salt in the water, you mean? Yeah. Like sometimes it's like someone would be like, oh, I can't even taste that. And I have a drink of it. I'm like, wow, that's so salty. Like what's is something to do with our... I don't know. That's interesting because okay. that okay. makes me think of like, you know, the zinc copper test. Right. Yeah. I mean, the zinc test, like if you can't take the zinc, taste the zinc, you may be a little bit zinc depleted. Mm -hmm. um, that's the first I've heard of that. I don't know. Okay. Uh, I don't that. know any kind of research. It might be that you're, you're deficient in certain electrolytes, I'm, but I'm not sure okay. at all. And so would you say that you're, so obviously this is personalized when you see there's hypertension and things, but would you say each water should have a little pinch or are you just saying the beginning of like the no. first water of the day? Yeah, no, you don't need a pinch in every single glass of water. So some of the things you need to look at, let's say, so if you're a big sweater, um, if you're sweating a lot, you're exercising, then you definitely need more electrolytes um, than somebody who's not a big sweater or a big ex exerciser. I would say most people probably, you know, one or two of those glasses a day could use a little pinch. Not, you don't need one with every single glass of water. It once, it's also once again, very individualized. Are you getting things like, you know, leg cramps or, um, you have to be in your body again. Are you feeling hydrated? Are you getting that afternoon fatigue, that afternoon brain fog? Those look, look back at those signs, um, and see, you know, when you've reached what you think 
feeling fantastic is, then then that's what it is. But I would definitely not do a pinch in every single water. That's not necessary. And the electrolytes, you probably use just one one pack a day then? Is that what you're kind of as a standard thing? Or what are you thinking? There? Yeah, I, I personally use one pack a day. Um, I have like major athletes that after like, you know, an endurance thing, they'll do another packet, something like that. But I think for most people, one packet a day is plenty. Okay. Uh, what about if someone's had heat stroke before and then there's become more susceptible to perhaps dehydration and it's like hot and they're, they're just like a sweaty person. And then you require, I, I don't know what's your take on all that. Yeah. Uh, hopefully they, <laughs> hopefully they've learned their lesson Yeah, and they are the people that need to read this book because mm. um, I have a very dear friend. She's a yogi. She's super healthy. You know, here we are in the summer. It's 90 something degrees outside. She decides at four o'clock in the afternoon to go for a bike ride and doesn't bring anything with her. Oh. Um, she got home. She was sick for hours. I was like, you had heat stroke. Like you're, you know, you, and, and she was, you know, nauseous, um, and she headachey. She would throw, you know, I don't know if she threw up, but she was close to it. And, um, and, and she knows better, you know, so it, it's, just, it's once again, it's staying on top of it. It's the one thing day in and day out that should never happen to anybody. You know, um, if you're staying on top of it, there's no reason to, for that to happen. Um, and, and there's no, it doesn't make you more susceptible to doing, to getting another heat stroke. It's not like a concussion or something like that, you know? Okay. So it's a policy. Okay. And so what are your top hacks to make sure we get enough water? You talked about foods and things like that. Anything, anything else you want to say there? Yeah. So, um, all right, let's go through them again. Uh, first thing in the morning, eight to 16 ounces, pinch of sea salt or an electrolyte, you know, packet, um, and, uh, some lemon. So, and what I do is I actually have a little glass, um, jar at my bedside. I do it before I go to bed. I have the glass that covers it. And first thing in the morning, I, I suck that down. Um, a glass of water before every meal. Um, a, a green smoothie a day, I really like. Um, soups, frescas, meaning, you know, infused waters. For people who don't hate to drink water, I love the idea of just single infusion waters where you're, um, you know, you're just throwing some macerated blueberries or, or cherries in, in a glass of water, something like that, you know. Um, I, I'm a huge believer in blenders. <laughs> like, you know, making some, some blended playing around with a blender, like get a blender and play around with it and macerate some fruits and veggies, do some hydrating drinks, smoothies. What else do I have for tips on being hydrated? Oh, we got to move. You know, we talked about your fashion, but we didn't talk yeah. about move as a hydrating act fascia turns out to be a hydraulic pump, right? Meaning that the, all of the connective tissue in our body moves fluid throughout our body, which is a bit of a mind-blowing thing because we've only ever thought that fluid gets moved via blood and lymph, right? Uh, lymph tissue. Uh, it turns out that fascia acts literally as a hydrating pump. So you got to move. And meaning uh, when you wake up in the morning, you want to do go through a series of movements, make them up, you know, wiggle your toes, circle your ankles, move your knees, do some squats, twist and turn and move your every single joint, like move it around um, and do try to do it all day long. Think about fidgeting and, and just being in motion um, because that is a hydrating act. That's, that's how we get um, hydration to the periphery. Um, by the way, they've done studies on this and they've shown that they've actually dehydrated young men and did biopsies. And, and what what they showed is that dehydration to the tune of only 2%, which we all can cycle through very easily in the middle of our day, um, has been, a, it affects the endothelium, which is the lining of your blood vessels very much the same way. It does as much damage as, as smoking a cigarette does, mm. this, this low-grade dehydration. So hydrate, move, breathe. Breathing is a hydrating act as well. We get uh, you know, humidified air in and out of our, our body by breathing, um, get outside, not alone, you know, let, a, let alone for the sunshine, but to get out of the air conditioning and the, the fake environments that we all live in are really important. And what about like water filters and some water bottles, you yeah. know, as you go into this thing, you become this, like this crazy water snob. I'm like, Oh no, I will not drink that. I'm like, <laughs> okay. Yeah. So what's your yeah. tips around water filters to start with? Okay. So, you know, I have a reverse osmosis filter mm -hmm. in my home. I have a table, you know, a counter, same people that make air doctor, they make a, a reverse osmosis over the affordable over the counter, uh, yeah. water, which okay. I think is great. But 
you know, not, and when I say affordable, it's still not that affordable for many people. So um, I send people to the environmental working group, ewg.org, mm-hmm. where you can find water filters based on, um, you know, what, based on price, that kind of thing. They really do a good job of explaining all of the different water filters. You also want to know what's in your water. So they have areas that you can look yeah. at in your, you know, so if you're in Flint, Michigan, you've got a problem, you know, so lead in your water, that kind of thing. But now there's, there's all kinds of like PCBs and, and PFOs, oh, PFOs and PFAs and all these bad things in our water that we're fine rate on in our water. I just read a new one that that's, a, that's an issue. Um, so you, you kind of do have to stay on top of it. And that's where, unfortunately, I still think that there is a place for bottled water, um, especially, I mean, I always travel with bottled water. Like if you're in a hotel, I'm not drinking that tap water. You need bottled water. There is still absolutely a place for it. I am just once again, full disclosure on the board of Essential Water. I'm not on the board. I'm sorry. I'm the health and wellness advisor for Essential Water, which I happen to think is a fantastic bottled water. And just by taste, you know, that alone is enough for me to do it. Um, They're also, you know, zero uh, net carbon neutral, they're carbon neutral. So, so uh, they give back and they, they do a really good job about environmental stuff. That's my biggest issue with bottled water, obviously, is the plastic bottles. You know, water filters, I'm, I, in ewg.org, bottled water, there's still a place for it. Does that answer the question? <laughs> yeah. So Essentia, A-C, I'm sorry, A-S-C-E-N-T-I-A? No, it's E-S-S. Okay. <laughs> E-S-S. E- E S S E N T I A essential water. It's great. It's um, it's a it's an ionized, um, alkalinized. So it has a very high pH. Which, by the way, not a lot of research um, at, with high pH water. But um, but I like the fact that they 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 replace minerals in their water. So there's trace minerals in there, and if and do a taste test, it tastes phenomenal. So that alone is 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 enough for me to say like that that is actually equivalent to putting. Uh, electrolytes in your water, right? Yeah. That's when, when I travel, I'll have to get the bottled water. I guess I can have, you can get that aqua sauna that has an actual filter in it. Then you can fill fill up your bottle that way. But someone was, I was hearing that, that Fiji water would be a good selection or smart water. Like what, what do you think of those selections? So I only know, um, Essentia that's, and that's because they chose me. And, and so I only know really, I don't, I don't, I couldn't possibly know all of the the waters that are I know. It just some of them are like, oh my goodness! Like you have the what the bottled water, and it just tastes like a Coke can or something. You know, <laughs> like what? Horrible. Exactly. Exactly. Oh. So I don't. I don't. You know, whatever it takes. Drink what you like. Um, I mean, I think most of the bottled waters um, are 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 pure, and you know, I like the idea of spring waters. I think those are, uh, and there's definitely some better ones than others. I know Essentia is reverse osmosis, so, so it's 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 very clean, and um, and like they replace the minerals and the high pH, and it tastes great. So. I'm making sure you have a, a glass or a stainless steel water bottle. Many people are still drinking out of the uh, plastic water bottles, or even if it's BPA free, which that still is still not recommended. Do you have anything to say on that one? Well, yeah. So, but that's what I'm saying. Unfortunately, um, I, once again, I would not go to a hotel and fill my water bo- my 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 stainless steel water bottle with um, with tap water. It just no. freaks. Out. <laughs> I know. So, so that's what I'm saying. There's still absolutely a place for bottled water right. that we, um, but yes, I, ideally we want to get those plastic bottles out of our hands um, as much as possible. Um, I, you know, there's, there's a link in the book called findaspring.com, okay. which is a really interesting website to send people to because there's, there's more natural springs like all over yeah. that you could fill water bottles and bring them home with you. I mean, that's, that's a big ask, <laughs> you know, but, but it's, but it exists and I've done it. So it could be, you know, it could be worth a, a hike one day to go get, you know, bring some water bottles home. It'd be good exercise. You know, you could think about it that way. Yeah. And then I guess from an endocrine disruptor is making sure that when you are drinking your water at your desk or wherever you are, that you've got that stainless steel or glass water bottle that, and then it filtered and which is, important. yeah. yeah. Um, sure. Anything you want to say on distilled versus like the, all the different types of water is it like RO is your, is your go-to or what is it like? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I I absolutely think uh, reverse osmosis is uh, is the best. You know, you're really getting out everything, um, and but you have to be careful then because you you do want to replace the right. the 
And especially that's even more so important than to be salting your water, um, some of those glasses of water and, and replacing those electrolytes. Uh, that's the one issue with reverse osmosis. Um, and the same with distilled water. I think they re- the distilled water also has no electrolytes in it, mm-hmm. too. So there is a little table in the book, in my book, Quench, um, about the different types of, of or a little box that talks about what they all mean. Is there anything, so we're going to recommend your book, obviously, Quench, and we'll have a link in the, the show notes for that. Is there anything that you're personally obsessed with right now, be it a book, a website, an app, a documentary, anything you, you're just, you're jamming with right now and wanted? To um, I mean, you know, Dr. Pollock is my, is my hero. Um, mm-hmm. I highly recommend you know, if, especially just any science nerds, um, his, like you could start with his Ted talks. He's got a couple out there. They're great. Um, his books are pretty great. I mean, they're, they're technical, but they're, uh, they're fascinating to me. He really is the, uh, the water hero. Um, I'm very much interested in, um, the water as electrical energy. I think that's where uh, a lot of the research is going. And there's some, there's some, uh, I'm, I'm going to blank. I'm, I don't have their names at my fingertips. I probably should have. This just came to my head, but I don't, um, as far as documentaries, I don't have anything. I know Zach Bush is also yeah. another pro of mine. He talks a lot about hydration. Um, he's got some interesting, you know, talks out there. He's a really wonderful speaker. Yeah. He's just an incredible human being, mm-hmm. I think. And I, I don't know him personally. I've met him a few times, but I, but you just, you just know it when you hear him speak. Mm-hmm. Uh, my biggest fascination right now, and, uh, and I'm not yet connected with them, but I hope to be is, um, a beast blender, which is a brand new blender out there. And, um, I'm obsessed with this thing. It's, um, it's a personal blender. Mm-hmm. It's by the same guy who created Nutra bullet they came out with this beast blender and it's it's just it's gorgeous and it's affordable somewhat affordable to, affordable to mo- many um not meaning it's not like a vitamix where it's not four hundred dollars right. and they they have a hydrating this is pretty interesting there's a hydration um part of that blender so there's a separate glass bottle that has a, t- a top on it that in the top is a is a metal infuser so you can macerate let's say just simply lemon and ginger spoon it into the into the metal infuser and then put it in your water and go um so a really nice way to do some infused waters or we call them beauty waters in the in the book where you can macerate them a little bit and then and then just take it on the go and how do you spell the name the name of that blender it's called the beast that's why that's what i heard okay the beast blender i love it (laughs) <laughs> hey, blend. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's going to be in Bed Bath and Beyond or something. So I'm talking to those guys. I'm, I'm not yet affiliated with them, but I just, uh, I really, I'm just full disclosure. But I really do love this product. He has created a beautiful, beautiful blender, and we were very purposely did not talk about blenders either in the book because of you know finances. Like we said, go out and buy a five dollar blender if you need mm-hmm. to at at a thrift store. Mm-hmm. But I am obsessed with this new blender. <laughs> nice. Um, okay, and so where can they? So you have uh they sign up for your newsletter you've got a one day meal prep guide can you share with what they'll they'll get there and kind of really where they uh, where they can find you yes so my website is www.drdanacohen.com um you could sign up it's just a, it's just basically like a, a ideas for what a healthy day of eating and hydrating looks like um so you don't have to read the book you know the, the book has by the way quench has a five day meal plan nice. um Rating plan. Um, and then there's tons of recipes for, you know, soups and desserts and popsicles and smoothies in there. Yeah. And then you'll, you'll, I'll, I'll send you a newsletter. Although I, I have to be honest, I haven't been so great with my newsletters, um, these past many months, but I'm getting back on it. <laughs> there you go. And so do you have any, um, final thoughts on our topic today? No, no, hydration is the single most important thing to do to treat and prevent chronic disease, which is the, Three, what is it? Thirty-eight trillion dollar expense a year is what we do for, for chronic disease in this mm-hmm. in this world. Three, I'm sorry, three point eight trillion yeah. um, in this country, the United States alone. So um, start with hydration. I think we can stave off so much of that. And truthfully, 
so many things from a from a chronic or from an illness standpoint will follow from there, including diet. And you know, once that ball gets rolling in the in the healthier direction, so many better things will follow. I love it. Yeah, just really those those doing these foundational steps, which I think we all know, but then are we actually doing it? So thanks for all these really actionable tips and, and all your yeah. words of wisdom on this topic. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. It, it doesn't have to be so so hard or daunting. Exactly. Thanks so much for being here. If you've got a question that you want answered, simply go to Fab Fertile Inc. on Instagram, send me a DM and we will answer your question on an upcoming show. That's Fab Fertile Inc. and send me a DM. And please refer to our disclaimer below. Take care. I regularly speak with five to 10 couples per week who are struggling to have their baby. And although we want to help everyone, we only have four spots available per month to work with us. I would like to invite you and your partner to a supercharge your fertility discovery call. And this calls for you if you meet at least one of these criteria. You've been trying to get pregnant for at least two years. You've been through at least one failed IUI or IVF. This calls for action takers. If you're not ready and you wait, the risk is you'll need to wait two to three months for a spot to open up. If you're seriously considering working with us, Go to Fab Fertile, F-A-B Fertile, and click on Book a Free Call. That's Fab Fertile, F-A-B Fertile, and click on Book a Free Call. Then you'll be all booked in and ready to spend 30 minutes to give you the action plan to getting pregnant naturally. Melatonin is important for female fertility. It helps regulate hormones and maintain the body's circadian rhythms. Plus, it helps determine the frequency and duration of the menstrual cycle. Plus it impacts sperm count and motility. Blue and green light negatively impact our melatonin production. That's why we recommend blue blocks, blue and green light sleep glasses to all our one-to-one -one clients. Simply go to blueblocks, B-L-U-B-L-O-X.com and use the coupon code get pregnant podcast at checkout to receive your 15% discount. That's blueblocks, B-L-U-B-L-O-X.com and use the coupon code get pregnant podcast. The get pregnant naturally podcast, including show notes and links provides information with respect to healthy living, nutrition, lab testing, and is intended for informational purposes only. The information provided is not a substitute for medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment, nor is it to be construed as such. We cannot guarantee that the information provided on the Get Pregnant Naturally podcast reflects the most up-to-date medical research. Information is provided without representation or warranties of any kind. Please consult a qualified physician for medical advice and always seek the advice of a qualified health care provider with any questions you may have regarding your health and nutrition program.